Good morning. Is that any better? Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to the service today at All Saints Church Muddyford. I have to remember where I am. I'm at All Saints Church Muddyford. On this third Sunday after Epiphany. So uh, I hope you can take a full part in the worship this morning. Just a word of sadness at the beginning. Um, many of you uh, know our friend jo- Joe Heath, um, who sadly lost her brother to COVID this week. So we remember her and all her family, Richard, Monica and Sylvie and Ricardo's family as well. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all are are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may come to love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we sing our first hymn, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun. Turn to our confession. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. We say, Mighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing the Gloria.
for the third Sunday of Epiphany. We say together, Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for our readings. gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength." And our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, The members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honourable, we clothe with great honour, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this, but God has so arranged the body, 
giving the greater honour to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together with it. Now, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is My Jesus, My Saviour. the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you like to sit down, please? (coughs) 
fascinating readings today. Thank you, Vicky, for reading those two long passages, one from the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament and the other from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. So let's just take a moment or two to think about that first one. There's Ezra, the priest, standing up in front of a mixed bag of people, some of them left behind in Jerusalem during successive invasions and not thought worth the effort of taking into captivity, and other Jews who'd chosen to return from exile. Many of them were wealthy and independent, may have done well for themselves in exile, and some who'd tried to be faithful to God but found it very difficult under the circumstances. Their loyalties when they were in exile were divided, and different religions were around, uh, and they were divided in their families. And so Ezra, this priest, stands up and begins to read from the law of Moses. And the people have to relearn about God, and they must do so by living together uh, to remind themselves of this post-exilic period when the Jews were scattered. And this is the interesting thing. They stand there listening to him from dawn to midday. Now, you just imagine listening to me, (laughs) standing up so you can't fall asleep, from 7 o'clock in the morning till midday. You wouldn't cope with that, would you? (laughs) And then there'd be these lay lay ministers coming around like Tony and and, and Anthea, you know, and they'd say, do you understand that? Did you understand that? And if not, they would explain it to you. So that's a big ask, isn't it? And And they were attentive and they said, amen, 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 because they wanted to hear the word of God. And they weep as they listen. For whatever reason, nostalgia, shame, joy. And they're told to turn their emotions into two directions. They're to remember to feed the poor and they are to worship God. Feed the poor and worship God. And then look at that reading from Corinthians, St. Paul writing to the people in Corinth in very early Christian times. And it's all about trying to build a new people. And the more you read the Bible, both in the Old Testament and the New, the more inescapable is the conclusion that community is basic to any human attempt to understand God community. And we can only get so far with personal, private spirituality. That's fine, having an individual spirituality. But the test comes when we interact that spirituality with others. And the Corinthians, the people in Corinth, were enthusiastic, they were gifted, They were clever in the main and determined, but they were infantile (coughs) in their ability to live together in love. We know that from reading uh, Paul's letters to the Corinthians. They were very immature in trying to live together in love. And Paul makes an impassioned plea for an attempt to think in a completely new way. The Corinthians have to learn to think of themselves as one entity, one body, whose health and life depends upon cooperation and connection. That's why he goes into so much detail about the one part of the body working with the other parts and so on. And I just wonder whether we have learnt that lesson yet. And so to the Gospel... Jesus' chosen description of his mission. And isn't it interesting that this declaration of intent 
is not about teaching us of a better spirituality, but about doing God's justice and creating God's community. These words are often, in, the, in this reading, often called the Nazareth Manifesto, because it's like earthly powers and governments setting out a manifesto of what they're going to do. But the difference is Jesus actually did it. And very often earthly powers do not. So, let's just have a look at that quote that he does <coughs> from, <coughs> excuse me, from the prophet Isaiah. And this is what he said. And this is what he did. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. That's the first part of the manifesto. Bring good news to the poor. And if you look at Jesus' ministry, as we will be doing in, in the next few weeks, we will discover that that is exactly what he did. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, release to the captives, those who are in captivity in any kind of way, maybe economic captivity, maybe persecution, all those people. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives. It's the second one. And recovery of sight to the blind. Now, that's not, not only <coughs> people, <coughs> oh dear, people who physically can't, it's all right, I'm, I'm fine. People who physically can't see, people who are blind, it's about, I think, being insightful. And very often people who are partially sighted and who are blind are, are more insightful than many of us. Recovery of sight to the blind. That's the third one. To let the oppressed go free. To let the oppressed go free. We think of all those countries in the world, particularly Afghanistan at this time, where there's so much oppression. To enable that to happen, to be part of that oppression, um, being freed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And that's all about the Jubilee year. Do you remember Jubilee 2000, a long time ago now? When the world, the whole world, at least the, 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 the nations promised the, in the West, promised to relieve the debt of those who were suffering from national debt. Didn't happen uh, totally, but that's what Jesus is saying. So I'm just going to repeat those. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And then he sat down. He just quoted that from Isaiah and then he sat down and he said, this is what's happening now. This is what I have been sent to do. And so in, the, <coughs> in these weeks leading up to Lent, and we've got quite a long period now because Easter's quite late this year, uh, we've got the whole of February before we start Lent in March. Um, I'm going to be coming on a Wednesday morning, probably grown now because you've had a lovely, lovely man coming on Wednesday mornings, but <coughs> another Welsh person, yeah, yeah that's right. Um, so I, I'm coming on Wednesdays in February, and, and I thought what, what we would do then is have the service as normal and just have a sort of five, five minute reflection on. Uh, it was kind of pre-Lenten course, really, to reflect upon Jesus' mission and our mission. So I hope that will be all right for you. 
And so many people, aren't they, are, are, are fearful of uh, confidently talking about their faith. And so to get a discussion going is a good thing, I think. Um, I know that most of you here are very confident and, and will talk about your faith quite openly. But in some churches, they won't. And, and that's a great uh, skill and a gift that you, you have. So that's really good. So I hope that through pre-Lent and through Lent, we can grow together in Christian witness and worship and then come to that glorious period of Easter with confidence, confidence and comfort that Jesus rose from the dead and we have the hope of all the challenges that lie ahead of us in Muddiford for you as the body of Christ here in this place. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so let's stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, <clears throat> of heaven and earth, and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, fraud from God, light from light, true God from true God, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. In the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Dear God, our Father, you're the creator of the universe, so vast that it's beyond our comprehension, and yet you love and care for us. You even sent your Son to be one with us, to live and die for us. Oh Lord, what a relief that his story, your story, our story does not end there. Jesus' death was not the end. We thank you that he rose again to live and intercede for us. And so we can come to you in trust and bring our prayers before you, assured that you hear and answer in whatever way is best for us. Dear Lord, grant each one of us the faith and trust to rest in that assurance and to bring our petitions to you in confidence that you will grant what is best for each of us your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your word this morning, Lord. We just thank you for the Bible. Thank you that we can hear it each week here, Lord, and that we have groups in our church who share and all are welcome to join. And we thank you, Lord, that we all have Bibles, I guess, in our homes and we can read them. Lord, thank you for that freedom 
Help us to value it and to read, mark and learn and digest and put into our lives what you teach us there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, our Father, holy and righteous, yet so patient with our fallen world, we pray for all those in governments near and far. We pray for all the men and women who hold the power to affect the lives of others, especially in our own land. We pray for all members of Parliament that they might take their responsibilities very seriously, seeking what is best for all. May they govern with integrity. We pray for Sue Gray with the heavy responsibility of investigating possible failures in this area at the moment. Give her courage and wisdom. Further afield, we pray about the situation on the Ukraine-Russian border. Lord, we ask you to bring calm, good sense and concern for the good of all to prevail. In that last evening in Gethsemane, you blessed your disciples. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We ask you for that same blessing, Lord, for ourselves and for all those who are living in tense and dangerous situations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this morning's news, there were more things, to, so many more things to pray for. I just come to the Lord now. Dear Lord, we do pray for the people of Afghanistan suffering from such a, a sudden collapse and for the terrible hardship there. Lord, we pray for leadership to mobilise aid. Britain, our country, is in a good place to start leading that. Lord, help us to turn outwards away from our own troubles and be concerned for the whole wide world, all your children. And we pray for those in Tonga. Thank you, Lord, that aid is reaching them. We do pray that you'll just bless them and give them hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Here at All Saints, Lord, we pray for our leaders, especially for Chris, for wisdom in making decisions and for healing from her injuries. We pray for all those who've taken on the responsibilities of keeping things going. I could mention names, but there are just so many, so many folk here who are involved in doing things to keep everything going. And Lord, we just thank, thank you for all of them and ask your blessing on each and every one in the responsibilities that they have taken on. We do thank you and pray your blessing on Rowan and Andy and all the visiting clergy, clergy, especially Helen today and, and all those who come on Wednesdays. Uh, and we just thank you, Lord, that we're able to continue our worship here. We pray for Bishops Debbie and David, for wisdom and guidance for the whole diocese, especially for guidance for the full committee meeting regarding our own church and the church in Burton on the 27th this week, Thursday and for the, the diocesan meeting on the 7th of February. What we long for, Lord, is that all the fellowships should flourish and grow in knowledge of you and in reaching their communities with the love of Jesus, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we would bring before you those in special need of your love and healing. Amanda, Liz, Sheila, Angela, Stephen, Anne, Geoffrey, Dorothy, Marion, Nigel, Loveday, David, Josie, and Angela W., and Jill. We remember before you the families and friends mourning the loss of Dennis White, and Pam Head, and George Grantham. May they feel your presence surrounding them and be granted comfort and peace. 
And we pray, Lord, for Joe Heath in the sudden loss of her brother, only in his 40s. Lord, bless Joe and family. And from home we turn further afield to bring before you the girls in the house of joy in Sri Lanka, your people in Kinchisi, the children and carers in the Julius and Dora Centre in Kenya, in Kenya, Chris and Veronica Pariachi and family in Spain, the St Francis Hospital in Zambia, and finally we pray for the safety and work Jeremy Nash uh, in, in Burkina Faso. He's currently meeting there with pastors and teachers where the dangers of Islamist terrorists have increased. Give all your children there courage and peace of mind, we pray. And so we gather all our prayers together, Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. we share the peace together. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a distant sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Our next hymn is Jesus Stand Among Us. We say together, yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Tony and I will come to you in your places to offer communion or a blessing. The gifts of God for the people of God.
We say together the prayers after communion. Almighty Father, whose Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, for he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So I'm sure there are some notices today. Chris? Good morning, everyone. <laughs> anyway, very warm welcome to you all, and especially if you're visiting us for the first time. Is it still not on? No. Is it now? Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Um, yes, a warm welcome to you all if you're visiting us for this, uh, this morning for the first time. Also, I'd just like to say a hello to our dear friends at Avon Reach, and we'll give you a little wave at Avon Reach because I know you'll be listening and watching us. So, uh, welcome to our service this morning. And I'm sure most of you have noticed a little robin flying about here this morning. He decided to fly in just before our eight o'clock service, so <laughs> he obviously enjoyed the service so much he decided to stay. <laughs> but we, we will try and get him out before we close the church up today. Anyway, uh, going back to our quiz evening that we had last Friday, wasn't it a super evening? Uh, we all enjoyed it, and I'd like to say thank you to Judy and your team, or social, um, the social team, and to Jody, uh, to Jody, Tony, our quiz master for the evening, and that the evening raised uh, 360 pounds. Wow. So it was a wonderful evening, so thank you very much. I have to say, Judy, I know you've been in the, church, in the kitchen since then because I went into the kitchen this morning to get a tea towel out of the drawer of the central aisle and the drawer disappeared. And I thought, where's the drawer gone? And you turned it round. <laughs> so it's, I have to, it's good and it gives us more space in the kitchen, so thank you. Um, and I think the, the rules changed this coming week for face masks um, and it's not going to be mandatory anymore, but... I am asking you all to just be aware and think of other people and, and encourage you to continue wearing face masks if you can. Uh, activities this coming week, well, it starts on Monday with the MU prayers in the vestry hall. And also on Monday, we've got Little Saints at 1.15. Uh, Wednesday morning, we've got the prayer group here at nine o'clock and that's followed by coffee morning followed by Holy Communion, and again we have Roy Matthews taking the service. And on Thursday evening we've got Bible study in the Vestry Hall, Friday Little Stars at High Cross, and Friday morning, mainly men, 11.30. Is there anything you want to add to that, uh, Vicky, for mainly men? or um, That it's a bring and share lunch. Bring and share lunch, and the speaker is our own dear Val Young. And uh, yeah, that's, it. that's it. Okay. Is there anything else people want to add? Or no, that's it. Thank you, Helen, for taking thank our you. service this morning. Pleasure. Thank you. Little saints, they're nearly as old as me now, little saints, aren't they? <laughs> and Maggie. It was Maggie that started it all. Yeah, lovely. And I saw some of them, some of the little saints, <laughs> little saints. 
at the remembrance uh, service when they were great big sort of sea scouts, you know. Yeah, it's great. So let's have our final hymn. Oh, for a thousand tongues. to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.